you know, I think computer security is the most exciting part of computing right now because it has something that nothing else has. It has an adversary relationship. I mean, if you do graphics or operating systems or, or anything, there's no one trying to thwart you at every turn. And that's what you have in security. And that's what makes it exciting and, and interesting. And that's what m makes it something that's forever changing and involves psychology and economics and computing and law and policy and, and so many things. So I think it's a great uh, area to be in, to work in. I think it's not going away, right? As long as we have adversaries, as long as we have human beings and, and ne'er-do-wells and evildoers, we're going to need security. So it, it's always going to be like that. You know, preparing is interesting. In a lot of ways, security is a mindset. It's a way of thinking about the world. And if you think about the traditional definition of a hacker, right, someone who sort of cobbles stuff together, you hack this tool and it works, and you put this piece together and this here and that, and, and it all works, and, and it's a great hack. But I'm a security guy. I'm going to say, well, turn this like that, it doesn't work anymore. And you'll say, well, don't do that. And I'll say, well, no, 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 I'm the attacker. I get to do that. I get to do that whenever I want. I get to do it at the most inopportune time. I get to do that in a way that makes your system fail as badly as possible. And you have to think that way, not about how to build something, not how to make it work, but how to make it fail. And how to make it fail in precisely the right way to do precisely the right sort of damage. And that's a way of thinking. I mean, there are some people who go through their lives looking at systems and figuring out, oh, I can break that. Oh, here's how to break that. Or you walk into a store and you see the purchasing system. Oh, I can steal something. Here's how. You walk into a voting booth. Oh, I can sort of defeat this. Here's how. You might not do it because, of course, that would be illegal, but you think that way. And that mindset, I think, is essential for security. Once you have that mindset, then it's a matter of just learning the domain, right? Learning the systems, and whether it's a self-driving car or a voting system or a medical device, right? it's going to be embedded code, interacting with the real world in a, in a way that involves people and society. And I can teach all that. You can learn all that. So I remember a class in security. I forget who did this. One of the assignments was, come in tomorrow and write down the first thousand digits of pi. Okay, so two things about this test. One, you can't memorize a thousand digits of pi. You have to cheat. And actually, the students were expected to cheat. But if they were court cheating, they would fail. Okay. That's interesting, right? That teaches that mindset. It allows you to think outside the box. I mean, how am I going to do this? Am I going... And there are lots of ways people cheated. And, and I sort of urge uh, people watching to go uh, Google this and, and to look at some of the stuff written. It's a great way of uh, trying to stimulate the mindset. Can you teach it formally? I don't know. It's kind of like, it's a way of thinking. And I think the more security classes you take, the more you exercise that mindset. A lot of the hacker conferences will have capture the flag uh, contests. I remember an early one where they had to build their own private network to cut down on both network license, latency and federal violations. Right? You, that's why you do it. But you're gonna learn a lot by breaking other people's systems. And yeah, that's probably gonna involve illegal activity. And, and, and agreed, you know, this isn't the best way, or maybe it is the best way, it's not the most socially acceptable way. You know, but here we have this clash between the tech imperative and what society wants. So many of our systems are black boxes. I mean, you can go and, and try to hack this, right? Your, your smartphone or your computer, and there's a lot of stuff you can learn. But really, it's going to be more fun if you can hack somebody else's cell phone or somebody else's computer. I want it to be open-ended. I want it to be, you know, follow whatever it is you're interested in. The neat thing about security is it can go wherever you want. There are so many different sub-disciplines. I'm often asked, should I study forensics or cryptography or network security or protocols? or embedded devices, or SCADA systems. Study what you want. And whatever interests you, 
follow that. Because really what you're learning is how to think like a security expert. And honestly, if you get a job and they make you do VPNs, you can pick up VPNs, that's easy. And it's the way to think. So do what you want. And you know, what we're learning right now is that demand is greatly outstripping supply. Right? That people who have expertise in security have a guaranteed career because there is such a demand for it and there is such a lack of supply. Have you written any of your books kind of in aimed at those kind of uh, you know, pre-computer science students or early computer science students that would sort of be a good read? I tend to write my books for general audience. Okay. So I think of my parents, my friends. So computer experts, yes, but really for a more general audience. Okay. So going back to something like Secrets and Lies, I wrote in 2000. It's about how network security works. Right, 15 years out of date, but it's still a good introduction on the basic concepts of how to think about security. You know, later cryptography engineering, how to engineer crypto systems. Uh, my book, Liars and Outliers, how to think about security as a way to enable trust. Very non-technical, but very much here's how security is embedded in society. Right, my latest book is about surveillance. And Data and Goliath talks about what's going on in the world of surveillance and how we can regain security. So to me, all of these books are for someone who might be interested in this field. Because what they're going to do is spark interest in different directions. They're going to give people ideas. They're going to go and research further. And that's how you get your passion. That's how you get your calling. You know, it's not that someone gives it to you, that you notice it going by and saying, hey, that's kind of neat. I want to do more there. Thank you.